All right, everybody, this is going to be part three, the conclusion of the earthquake series. So let's get out your King James Bible, and I guess we're going to go to Revelation chapter 12. And Maddie, if you're listening to me, I don't know what's going on. Uh, everybody, there's a somebody that's tries they comment on my channel I can't reply to them and they can't reply to me they can post on my channel and I can post on their channel but we can't talk to each other and I looked to see if we were uh, if I had her I'm assuming it's a her blocked um, but it's not so Maddie if um, check and see if for some reason I'm blocked you go to my uh, about and then you click the little flag thing and see if it says block user or unblock user so alrighty let's uh, do part three the end of the earthquake series the earthquakes are going to serve as a warning for the Lord to his remnant but also it's going to be a help people don't realize it but like I said in a previous study, the flood of Noah was salvation for Noah and his family. But it was judgment for the wicked, the evil. So let's go to Revelation chapter 12. Now I did an, uh, an in-depth study on it. I think what I'm, I'm just going to briefly go into this. So, all right, Revelation chapter 12, verse 14. I've got a playlist, a multi-part series on Revelation chapter 12, so I don't want to cover it all again. So, and to the woman. Now, if you don't know the woman's a church, um, what can I tell you? Uh, if you go to the modern 501c3 businesses masquerading as a church, They'll tell you the woman is the, uh, are the Antichrist living over in the Middle East. I don't think so. I think the woman is the church, the true church, the remnant church, a very, very, very small remnant. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle. Now, that doesn't mean like... Uh, She's going to look like Hawk Girl. Uh, those of you that like uh, have watched DC Comics in the past, um, they had a character, a girl that uh, they called her Hawk Girl, and she had wings. No, I don't think so. I don't think we're going to be given wings. But when um, God told Moses that he bear the Israel on eagle's wings, we'll probably cover that. But it's it was in a previous study. For those of you that don't remember, it was in part, I think part two it was in, but I don't remember. Now, please, people, I got a lot of older studies. You know, you don't have to listen to just the new stuff. I got a lot of old stuff. Uh, matter of fact, I got hundreds of older studies. And uh, some of the early, the early, early ones were just slideshows. And then I broke down and bought a microphone. But uh, I've got hundreds of studies covering in the playlist that's studying covering end times events. I mean, I'm probably I know I'm not right on everything. I mean, let's face it, Jesus was asked by the disciples when he would return, and he said he didn't know, the angels didn't know, but the Father only. I mean, if if there's things that you know, something Jesus doesn't know, you better believe there's gonna be things I don't know, that's for sure. All right, and to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, not the cities. She's not going to be flying to New York City or Los Angeles or Chicago. That she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time, a year, and times, two years, and half a time, half a year. From the face of the serpent. Now, who's the serpent? The Bible clearly tells you the serpent 
that old serpent called the devil and Satan. And if you don't know that, uh, I've I've done I've beaten that horse so many times. So, verse fifteen, and the serpent cast out of his mouth water, water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. Verse 16. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Now, Personally, I think it's like an earthquake type thing. But what is this flood? Well, we'll find out in a minute. Verse 17. So the earth's going to help the woman. Earth's going to open its mouth and swallow up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth. What is wroth? Extreme anger. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and, and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. See, the dragon doesn't care if you're a Jew keeping the commandments of God if you don't have the testimony of Jesus Christ. And if you have the testimony of Jesus Christ and you don't keep the commandments of God, well, the dragon's not going to be mad at you. You know, if you're a, a lawless Christian, uh, you know. Now, the Bible says that, uh, Paul writes that those that are led by the Spirit, those that are led by the Spirit are not, you know, they, they don't have the law, period. And we'll cover that in a minute. So what's this flood that the uh, dragon is going to cast out of his mouth. Well, Revelation 17 and verse 15. Now, the thing is, if you use a different Bible than the King James, the problem is the new Bibles change words so that you don't make the connections here that destroys the continuity. And we're going to show you that in a second. Revelation 17, 15. And he said unto me, The waters, the waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Revelation 17, 15. The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues, languages. Ah. Now, do you understand? It says, And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away the flood. Immigration people, heathen satanic nations of immigration, but the earth is going to help the woman, and the earth is going to open her mouth and swallow up the flood of heathens, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Now, keeping laws does not save you. Okay? They are only the byproduct of salvation. I mean, if you truly are saved... Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. I mean, you know, he doesn't want his people to become hitmen for the mafia, right? In Galatians 5.22, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. 
And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. There you have it, people. Those that are led by the Spirit, there's no need for the law because they follow the Holy Spirit guides them. All right, so let's take a look at opening the mouth. Now, usually when a phrase or a unusual word appears, if you look look up, like for example, in the King James Bible online.org or the Blue Letter Bible, you can find out where the first instance of the usage of the word or phrase is, and usually within the context of the usage, you will find out what the meaning of the word or usage of the phrase is. For example, opened her mouth. The first time that appears is in Genesis chapter 4. Cain has just murdered Abel. And the Lord confronts Cain. So let's read Genesis chapter 4, verse 9. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth. Ah, and now thou art cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. You see, the earth opened her mouth to, to receive Abel's blood. Verse 12. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. In other words, give up trying to be a farmer because you can plant all you want, but nothing's going to bear, not from your hand anyways. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. i uh, tell you what, when you can find a people that have always been fugitives and vagabonds in the earth, uh, kicked out of every single country, never farmers. When you could identify that group, there's a good chance that they are possibly the children of Cain, if they survived the flood of Noah's day. Uh, I don't know. You know, the Bible doesn't... You know, the thing is, the Bible doesn't tell you who Noah's wife or wives were it doesn't tell you who Shem, Ham, and Japheth's wives were. You have no idea who their genealogy is. People say that Canaan married a daughter of Cain. I don't know. I can't say yes. I can't say no, because there's just not enough information there. So, all right, so let's go to Numbers chapter 16. Now this, this is the big one right here. Now, the Lord had brought Noah and his, not Noah, I'm sorry, Moses and the uh, Israelites out of Egypt, the first Passover. And, uh, wow, here we go. Let's just read the whole chapter. Numbers chapter 16. Now, Korah, the son of Izhar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi. Now, Levi was the tribe of the priests. They were actually relatives of Moses and Aaron. Moses and Aaron were priests. The son of Levi and Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab and On, the son of Peleth, sons of Reuben, took men, and they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. And they gathered themselves together against, against Moses and against Aaron and said to them, Ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, in other words, uh, you take too much upon you. In other words, you guys are setting yourselves up as our kings and judges and our rulers. And all the congregation is just as holy as you are. Oh, 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 you mean the congregation that was dancing before the golden calf? That congregation? They're holy, huh? Now, you got to understand something. God picked Moses. God chose Moses to lead Israel out of Egypt into the wilderness. And here it is. These people are saying, uh, no. We don't want Moses. No, 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 no. We're going to split up the duties here. We don't care what God wants. We're going to take we're going to take some of this responsibility and we're going to be the leaders. You take too much upon you seeing all the congregation are holy. Yeah. Yeah. Those that danced around the golden calf, they're holy, all right. Seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Wherefore then, lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. And when Moses heard it, he fell upon his face, and he spake unto Korah and unto all his company, saying, Even tomorrow the Lord will show you who are his and who is holy, and will cause him to come near unto him. Even him whom he hath chosen will he cause to come near unto him. This do, take your censers, Korah, and all his company. Now, if you don't know what a censer is, uh, it was something that they burned incense into. Um, you know, basically it's holy smoke, you know. All right. And put fire therein and put incense in them. Um, and see, this is what I love about the, the, the King James Bible. Take this, take your censers, Korah and all his company, and put fire therein and put incense in them. See, the if you didn't know what a censer was, it tells you, start a fire in it and put incense in them. I mean, it explains itself. And put incense in them before the Lord tomorrow, and it shall be that the man whom the Lord doth choose, he shall be holy. Ye take too much upon you, ye sons of Levi. And Moses said unto Korah, Hear, I pray you, ye sons of Levi. Seemeth it but a small thing unto you that the God of Israel hath separated you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to himself to do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord and to stand before the congregation to minister unto them? Now, you don't, maybe you don't understand it, but God took the tribe of Levi and made them the ones that would do the temple and tabernacle services. That's what the tithe was for was for all the 11 tribes to support the tribes of Levi. They were the ones that uh, gave the Bible. Now, the tribe of Judah was the tribe of the kings. They were to be the rulers, the civil rulers. Uh, basically, you know, there was no separation of church and state and God's kingdom. The Levites would do the religious um, part, and the king would do the civil part. And, but they worked together, not against each other. You know, I mean, Levi had a very important job. He was to do God's work. You know, so. Verse 10, And he hath brought thee near to him, and all thy brethren, the sons of Levi, with thee, and seek ye the priesthood also? I guess uh, Aaron, Aaron was to be the priest. So, um, and Moses was the lawgiver, right? Verse 11. For which cause both you, thou and all thy company are gathered together against the Lord. And what is Aaron that ye murmur against him? And Moses sent to call Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, which said, we will not come up. Is it a small thing that thou hast brought us up out of the land that floweth milk and honey? And they're talking about Egypt here. That thou hast brought us up out of a land which floweth with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness? Except thou 
make thyself altogether a prince over us. In other words, we were slaves in Egypt, but we forgot about that. And, and we had milk and honey and food. And, and now you bring us out into this wilderness. You know, don't, don't forget, God was not only brought them out of Egypt, he wanted to get Egypt out of them. Okay? It wasn't enough to bring their physical bodies out of Egypt. He wanted to get the spiritual Egypt out of Israel. And he let them wander in the wilderness. And they're accusing Moses. Oh, you're, you're making a prince. You're making yourself a prince over us. And then they're, verse 14, they're, he's saying that, uh, you know, God, he, he, he's basically accusing God of not keeping his promise. Let's read it. Moreover, thou hast not, not brought us into a land that floweth with milk and honey, or given us inheritance of fields and vineyards. Wilt thou put out the eyes of these men? We will not come up. And Moses was very wroth and said unto the Lord, Respect not thou their offering. I have not taken one ass from them, neither have I hurt one of them. And Moses said unto Korah, Be thou and all thy company before the Lord, thou and they and Aaron tomorrow. And take every man his censer and put incense in them and bring ye before the Lord every man his censer. 250 censers, thou also and Aaron, each of you his censer. And they took every man his censer and put fire in them and laid incense thereof and stood in the door of the tabernacle of the congregation with Moses and Aaron. Ah, we're getting close to the punchline. And Korah gathered all the congregation against them unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and the glory of the Lord. Sorry, this is not the Shekinah. S-H-E-K-I-N-A-H. Uh, there's a bunch of people claiming to be Messianic Jews, and they'll tell you that this is the she, she, S-H-E, Kina, the goddess. Sorry, the Holy Spirit is not female. He's referred to as he. Uh, but they'll tell you that, uh, I don't know, anytime you listen to a Messianic you know who, you're going to be in trouble. And the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the congregation. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Separate yourselves from, from among this congregation, that I may consume them in, in a moment. And they fell upon their faces and said, O God, the God of all, the God of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin, and wilt thou be wroth with all the congregation? And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the congregation, saying, Get you up from about the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. And Moses rose up and went unto Dathan and Abiram, and the elders of Israel followed him. And he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs, lest ye be consumed in all their sins. So they got up from the uh, they got up from the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram on every side, and Dathan and Abiram came out and stood in the door of their tents, and their wives and their sons and their little children. And Moses said, Hereby, hereby ye shall know that the Lord hath sent me to do all these works. For I have not done them of my own mind. If these men die, now this is Moses speaking, if these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord hath not sent me. In other words, if these guys die of old age, then the, Lord's, the Lord hasn't sent me. Verse 30. But if the Lord make a new thing, and the earth open her mouth, and the earth open her mouth, and swallow them up with all that appertain unto them, and they go down quick into the pit. Then ye shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. 
And it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground clave asunder that was under them. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up like a giant sinkhole, people. The earth, the ground underneath them just vanished and a big hole appeared and they fell in. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up and their houses and all the men that appertained unto Korah and all their goods. They and all that appertained to them went down alive into the pit and the earth closed upon them. Not only did the hole open up, but the earth closed upon them. Think about that. Korah wasn't going to be standing from the bottom of a hole going, oh, hey, uh, can you send me a rope or a ladder so I can climb out of this pit? No. The earth closed upon them, and they perished from among the congregation. And all Israel that were round about them fled at the cry of them, for they said, lest the earth swallow us up also. And there came a fire from the Lord and consumed the 250 men that offered incense. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Eliezer, the son of Aaron, the priest, that he take up the censers out of the burning and scatter thou the fire yonder, for they are hallowed. The censers of these sinners against their own souls, let them make them broad plates for a covering of the altar, for they offer them before the Lord, therefore they are hallowed. And they shall be a sign unto the children of Israel. And Eliezer the priest took the brazen censers wherewith they that were burnt had offered, and they were made broad plates for a covering of the altar, to be a memorial unto the children of Israel, that no stranger, no stranger which is not of the seed of Aaron, come near to offer incense before the Lord, that he be not as Korah and his company, as the Lord sent to him by the house, I'm sorry, by the hand of, uh, as the Lord sent unto him by the hand of Moses. But on the morrow, all the congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron. Oh yeah, they never learn, do they? Saying, ye have killed the people of the Lord. You know, in the uh, Talmud, um, the wisdom of the chosen tribe, they say that Moses was a master musician, magician, not musician, magician, and that he used Kabbalah to uh, cause the earth to open up and kill Korah and his company. Yeah, magic. Not the Lord, magic. And they said, ye have killed the people of Lord. And it came to pass when the congregation was gathered against Moses and against Aaron, that they looked toward the tabernacle of the congregation, and behold, the cloud covered it, and the glory of the Lord appeared. And Moses and Aaron came before the tabernacle of the congregation, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Get you up from among this congregation, that I may consume them as in a moment. And they fell upon their faces. And Moses said unto Aaron, Take a censer and put fire in, fire therein from off the altar and put on incense and go quickly unto the congregation and make an atonement for them for there is wrath gone out from before the Lord the plague is begun and Aaron took as Moses commanded and ran into the midst of the congregation and behold the plague was among was begun among the people and he put on incense and made an atonement for the people and he stood between the li the dead and the living and the plague was stayed. Now they that died in the plague were 14,700 beside them that died about the matter of Korah. And Aaron returned unto Moses, unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the plague was stayed. You see, people, the earth opened her mouth. All right, and you can read in Numbers chapter 26, verse 9. And the sons of Eliab, Nemuel, and Dathan, and Abiram, this is that Dathan and Abiram, which were famous in the congregation, who strove against Moses and against Aaron in the company of Korah, 
when they strove against the Lord. See, they weren't striving against Moses and Aaron. They were striving against the Lord because he's the one that picked Moses and Aaron. Verse 10, And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up together with Korah. When that company died, what time the fire devoured 250 men, and they became a sign. Oh yeah, that's a sign from God, all right. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 5 and verse 14, we read, Therefore hell, hell, hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure. And their glory and their multitude and their pomp, and he that rejoiceth shall descend into it. All right, so... Let's take a look. All right, so what's the deal about eagle's wings? Well, in Exodus 19, um, all right, the uh, Moses is leading the children of Israel out of Egypt, where they were in slavery. So let's read Exodus 19, verse 1. In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai, for they departed from Rephidim and were come to the desert of Sinai and had pitched in the wilderness, and there Israel camped before the mount. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say unto the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians. Oh yeah, all the plagues of Egypt which closely resemble the plagues of Revelation people during the tribulation. Think about it. You've seen what I did unto the Egyptians and how I bear you on eagles' wings. And how I bear you on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. See, it's a figure of speech. I bore you on eagles' wings. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. All right, let's go back to Revelation chapter 12 and verse 14. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle. You see, if you don't understand something in the New Testament, you go to the Old Testament and it explains. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time. Uh, the, the fact that a time is a year comes from the book of Daniel. Just trust me on that, will you? where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. That's about three and a half years, people. Uh, Forty and two months, 1260 days, I believe. Okay. Verse 15. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after a woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood of heathens. Uh, I'm sorry. And swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. You see, there's going to be a big earthquake and the earth's going to open her mouth and swallow up the flood that the dragon sent to destroy the woman. So there you have it, people. It's like I said, the flood in the days of Noah was salvation for Noah and his family. And right here, this is going to be salvation for the remnant woman of the woman. So, all right, well, uh, if you don't hear from me a while, check out my old playlists and 
my old studies. I've seriously, I've got hundreds of them, people. Hundreds. Pick a subject and take a look. I mean, I've been doing, I've been online for 10 years now. So, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.